Hello, everybody, and welcome to the uh, Forstronics blog. My name is Neil, and this project is the Bluetooth RC car project. So it's a remote control car using Bluetooth. This is a project uh, I came up with to do with my son because an RC car, uh, <laughs> it speaks to people of all ages. Also, too, one thing to note about this RC car project is I wanted to use parts around my lab so I didn't have to buy a lot for it. Uh, so if, if you wanted to start from scratch, there's definitely some parts you could optimize uh, for cost if you were buying everything from scratch, and I'll, I'll point those out. I use the Bluetooth standard for communication between the controller or the joystick and the car using the RN42 modules. On the joystick as well as on the car, I have an, an Arduino. So here's a picture of the finished product, uh, the car on the right, of course, and the joystick on the left. Joystick, you can see I, I have a breadboard on the outside with my Bluetooth module. I, d I decided not to put the Bluetooth module inside the controller. Also, too, I'll, I'll point out another thing. In this project, I wanted to put everything on there so I could reuse it. Whether it's the Arduino boards and the or the Bluetooth modules, I made it so they come off easy so I can use them for other projects and then maybe put them on again if I want to use the RC car. Okay, I'm going to start off with, with the parts list for the RC car, then for the joystick, then I'm going to look at the uh, schematics for both, then we'll peek at the Arduino code for both of them, and then I'll, I'll show a quick video of, of the final product in action. So here's the part list for the car. Uh, I have the RN42 module. I actually am using the RN42 XV module, which basically has an RN42 on a, uh, I think it's a 0.1 inch pin form factor, like an XB. I did that because the RN42 module is too small and it's not easy to solder. I'm using an Arduino Uno to control the car. I used for the motor shield, I used an Adif the Adafruit um, motor shield for Arduino version 2. And uh, I like this motor shield because it, it actually allows you to control up to four motors. Uh, most shields only support two, so that was the nice thing, four electric motors. And I got this, of course, at, at Adafruit.com. The uh, four-wheel drive robot car kit uh, for Arduino, this I got... I think from dfrobot.com, and they have a lot of variations of this kit. I bought the cheapest one, which the motors aren't here aren't hugely fast, but they're they're fast enough, and the kit was fairly inexpensive and easy to assemble. If you're looking for high speed, you're probably going to want something different as far as a kit. A uh, small breadboard, you can see the breadboard. That's where uh, my voltage divider and Bluetooth module are mounted. Battery pack. My battery pack is underneath or in between the, the two, the body of the car, between the motors. You can use a lot of different battery packs. I had, uh, once again, this is an example of using what I had in the shop. I had a uh, three three lithiums in, in in series, so I think it's you know a 11 volt to 13 volt battery pack. Of course, you don't need that high. You could go a, a little lower. I have a just a basic DC switch that I think I got from Radio Shack for turning it on and off. I have a 5 and 10K resistor on my breadboard, and that's because my Arduino is 5 volt logic and the Bluetooth module is 3.3 volt logic, so I made a voltage divider when I'm communicating with the uh, Bluetooth module over serial. And then there's a lot of other basic parts. You can see I, I mounted the shield and Arduino on a piece of plexiglass that's standing up. I did this to conserve room in case I want to put in the future put some sensors on there. So for that, I had a piece of plexi bass that I cut. I had some, uh, just some brackets, some screws and nuts, and of course wiring. The joysticks part list. For the joystick, I once again have an RN42 Bluetooth module. I used an Arduino Duo, and the Arduino Duo is actually fairly expensive and fairly high performance. So I would use this once again, this is an example of because this is what I had in my lab. So I had a second Arduino, which was a duo, and I decided to use that. You could also use an Uno or, or something equivalent, which is much smaller and, and cheaper. For the joystick, I wanted to look around for a fun joystick way to control it. I found the Parallax to Access joystick. If you search on that, it'll come up. I actually saw it at Radio Shack too, uh, but this is a nice joystick, very simple to use. A small breadboard, you can see it on the front. That's where I put my Bluetooth module. Battery pack, 
for this battery pack, I used just a case to hold three, um, excuse me, not three, five AA batteries. And once again, I had the case and I had the batteries. That's why I went with that. You could also use a rechargeable battery. A DC switch from Radio Shack. Once again, the same DC switch that I used in the RC car. The plastic black box. I'm not sure where I got this. I, I've had it for a while, but you can find a box. Or if you have an old controller or something you know, uh, handy, you can just convert that into it. And then finally, uh, wiring. I have some standoffs inside the box uh, that's holding the Arduino Duo, and I have the battery pack underneath the Arduino Duo. Okay, let's look at the schematics for the car and the joystick. So let's first start out with the car. Here you can see my Arduino Uno. Uh, you can see my shield. Uh, what's nice is Adafruit provides libraries for this motor shield. So they have, a, they have an example and they have some libraries. Uh, so it's easy to use. But what's nice is you're not using pulse width modulation pins on the Arduino. You're just using a sim You're using the I squared C connection to control it. And the motor shield does the rest. M1, M2, M3, M4 are just the connections on the shield going to the motors. Uh, and then, of course, I have my Bluetooth module. You can see my voltage divider for the serial port that's transmitting from the Arduino to the uh, RN42, because the RN42 is 3.3 volt logic. And of course, when transmitting from the Bluetooth module to the Arduino, you know, 3.3 is enough to for Arduino to read a high. So I didn't have to, I didn't put any voltage conversion there. Okay, one thing to note too is you can see the battery power coming in. So all I'm using here is Arduino's regulator. So I just need to keep that between 12 and I, I think seven volts for it to go low. I didn't, this was a quick project. I didn't put any like sensors to show when the battery is low or anything like that. Also, one thing to note is I'm actually using the regulator on the motor shield. The motor shield, you can either power it from Arduino board or it has its own separate regulator. I found that the Arduino's regulator was not enough to, to power everything. So I have separate power inputs, one going to the Arduino, which is also powering the Bluetooth, and one going to the shield, and, and that works fine. OK, here is the joystick schematic. So once again, I'm using the Arduino Duo. Uh, you can use uh, an Uno or something you know, less uh, high performance and, and big and, and costly. There's my joystick on the left. The joystick is fairly easy to hook up. Uh, you can see it on there. The joystick works with two 10K potentiometers, and one represents up and down, or forward and backward direction, and one represents left or right. And the idea is you're reading them with analog pins, so if the forward back direction is zero, that means you're all the way backwards. If it's a 1,024, uh, you know, 10-bit analog reading, that means you're full forward. And I think left is 0 and right is 1024. And then, of course, you can do in-betweens. But the whole idea is you're reading the two axes, one left and right and one up and down. For this setup, the Arduino Duo is 3.3 volts, so I don't have to have a voltage divider. And I have the battery going right to the Ar Arduino because, uh, you know, this is not high power. OK, let's look at some notes for setting up the RN42 Bluetooth modules to, to work in this setup. And this is important for understanding what's going on in the code. Now, if you're new to the RN42s, I encourage you to uh, check out my tutorial, Getting Started with the RN42 Bluetooth module, because I'm already going to assume that you have that level of knowledge uh, for this. One thing you want to make sure you do on both modules is when you are put them in command mode and turn authentication mode off. So the command is SA-0. Uh, and of course, everything I show you here can be found in the user manual for these modules. Also, another thing I did was, you only need to do this on one of the modules, but for the module that's going on the RC car, I use the SO command, which basically tells it to return a string uh, when, when it makes a connection or it disconnects. And the percent sign is, is something that I, I'm telling it to append to that string or that message. So once the module on the car makes a connection, it will automatically return the percent sign and that string connect and it will return the address it connected to. Uh, I use this to read to make sure the connection worked. And if, if it didn't work, it'll return a failed. Yeah, if it didn't work, it'll return a failed. The command I use, and once again, this part is done in code. 
when I'm in my Arduino code, I put that module, when, when the car is first being turned on, I put that module in command mode, and then I'm gonna use the C command, it's an action command, along with the address the module on the joystick to make the connection. This setup, I tried to make it as simple as possible, and so both modules can be left here in, in slave mode. Or you could put the one on the car in, in master mode, it, it doesn't matter. Once the modules connect, uh, the, the module on the car that was in command mode automatically just comes out of command mode. That, that doesn't really tell you that in the documentation. And then once you're at that point, the modules just act like wireless serial connections and you can communicate back and forth. Here's a sketch for the Bluetooth RC car. These top three libraries are all for the uh, Adafruit Motor Shield. Uh, here I'm declaring some objects for the Motor Shield, and, and once again, you can copy this from this code, but also Adafruit has an example as well. These two variables, the UD speed and LR speed, are my variables that are going to hold my speed values coming in from the controller. And then also there's a lot going on in my setup code and that's where I'm gonna initiate the connection with the two Bluetooth devices. Basically, I'm gonna put one of the Bluetooth devices in command mode. Uh, once it's in, once I verified it's in command mode, I'm gonna then initiate a connection and I, I do that using this, this function here, connect BT, and I, I just hard coded in the address. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you that function briefly, but in the setup code, the either sketch, whether it's this sketch or the sketch I'm going to show you, they don't ex they don't exit the setup code until a connection is established. This this just is to tell the other controller that that a uh, the connection was successful. Here's the main loop. Uh, I'm not going to go through this in detail, but basically what I'm doing is I'm looking for a up down or left right packet. And so what I did is. I take each reading from the uh, from the joystick and I wrap it in a packet. And what I mean by that is, for up down, I put a U in front of it, and then I put the reading, the analog reading, and then I put a D next on the back of it. And that way, I can identify the packet. And if there's some kind of error and the packet's not complete, I know it. I know it because it's not going to have the the starting U and the and the ending D, and I can just throw that packet out. I do the same thing for the left right packet. I, I start it with an L. I then put the analog reading inside of it, and then I end it with a R. So I'm looking for those packets, and when I get them, I you know strip away the the letters, and I just get the raw analog value, and I turn it into an integer, and then I feed it to my speed controlling uh, and direction controlling function, and that is done uh, right here, set motor speed. I also have this protection right here, and basically what this does is if I don't get a uh, command in a certain amount of time, basically uh, 20 milliseconds. I set the motors to stop. So if you're driving outside and, and you're too far away, and, and once again, Bluetooth doesn't have a huge range. So if you're too far away and you're driving it outside, uh, it won't just keep going forward all of a sudden and, and run into something. It'll eventually just turn off the motors if it doesn't receive a command. Okay, now I'm leaving the main loop and here is the connect Bluetooth. Uh, so basically what I do is I send the connection command a C comma then the address and then and then a return line and once again the the Bluetooth module is in command mode at this point I send this connection command it's going to try to connect to that address which is the address of the joystick uh, and it's going to keep looking to see if that connection was successful and so basically when you try to connect it's going to say trying and I have this here in parentheses it first returns trying to connect so I, I make sure I receive that. Then I'm looking for this uh, special character that I have added to the front and the word connect. Well, actually, just the letter C. So if I, if I see this symbol and the C, I know the connection was successful. If I don't see that, if I see a failed, uh, which here I'm looking for the F, then I know the, the connection failed. And I've set it up so I just keep trying to reconnect if, if, if I'm not connecting. Uh, here's a function I have just to clear out the serial buffer. Here is my uh, is how I set the the speed for an up down or left right uh, motion. One important thing to note on this car is I don't have a uh, a servo changing the front wheel's directions. The way I turn is by is by adjusting the speed on one side of the car. It allows. What's nice about that 
when you're still, and I'll show you in the, in the video, you can actually do you know, quick turns, a 180 turn or a 360 turn. I'm not going to go through this code in detail. This is all commented and you can find this on my blog. Okay, now we're looking at the joystick um, sketch. So this is on the Arduino Duo uh, in the jo joystick. And this is more of the, the slave to the connection. The, the master is more on the car. So this is going to turn on and it's just going to wait. And what it's going to wait for is the, this pound character because once the master the, or the car connects and it knows it connected, it's going to send this pound symbol to the uh, to the joystick to let the joystick know that we're connected. Uh, then I go into the main loop and all I'm doing is is constantly just reading those analog values from the joystick. Uh, I do a little filtering on them and, and you can see the filter function down here. I then format the values to create my packet that I'm going to send because remember I'm, I'm wrapping the packet with the values with a UD for up down or a LR for left right. So, and I'm also staggering how, how I send them. So I'll send one and then wait seven milliseconds, send the other, then wait seven milliseconds and repeat. Here's my filter function. Uh, you can read the comments on that. This is my formatting function. I just want to make sure that every packet I send is the same length. So whether the value is 10 or 1,000, my packets are always six bytes or six characters long. It makes it easy for, for reading them and, and detecting an error in the packet uh, on, on the end of the car. Okay, and that's it. The joystick code is, is much simpler. Okay, so we looked at the schematic. We looked at some of the commands. We looked at the code and the parts list. Now let's see the, the final project in action. And this was, a, this was actually a pretty fun project to, to put together at any age, I'll say. So you can see the car going forward. I'm just kind of randomly pushing around backwards. Here's the cool part. Uh, I can actually make it turn into 180 or 360 without really moving. Uh, you can see my hand on the joystick doing some motions. The turning is a little touchy. Uh, might be something you want to work on on, on the, the algorithm that I use. But I, I wanted, to, when the car is stopped, it'll do the 360 or the 180 turn. Uh, when it's moving, it'll do more of a flight turn. Okay, there we go. Uh, that was the RC car in action. One last thing I'll add that, that came to my mind is on a flat surface, this, this car that I bought uh, works very well. It, it goes fairly fast. Outside on the grass or on the dirt, it's, it's not so good. Or even on a pavement that's very uneven. And the reason is, is the tires don't have much grip and also there's no suspension. So it'll bounce around a lot. So, you know, if you want something to go off road, you're going to get to get better tires and, and, um, you know, platform that has suspension. Uh, but this is great for flat surfaces, uh, fool around with it on in your basement or anything like that. Okay, that is the Bluetooth RC car project. If you need the Ar Arduino code or the images of the schematics, you can go to my blog if you're watching this on YouTube. I have more content on YouTube or my blog. If you have any questions, you can email me. Also, too, if you're new to the Bluetooth modules, I have a tutorial on getting started with, with the RN42 Bluetooth module, so, so check that out. All right, thanks for watching.